Russell Gersten. Um, I'm executive director of Instructional Research Group in Los Alamitos, California. Hi, I'm Sharon Vaughn. I'm the executive director of the Meadows Center for Preventing Educational Risk and a Regents Professor at the University of Texas at Austin. What exactly is this multi-tier intervention, RTI, and where exactly does special education fit in? A couple of states have said that tier three is special education. Many states have said tier three is never special education. There is no clear definitive answer. There is no legal position from the U.S. Department of Ed or any of the courts. Uh, we are still trying to figure that out We've tried actually in the practice guide to indicate that special education can play a role in a whole bunch of tiers. That part of a child's tier three intervention could include some time with a special educator or a program designed by a special educator but implemented by another um, person at the school. Russell, it's conceivable that some districts or states might have a three-tier system in which tier th three would be defined as special education and that tier two is an increasingly intensive intervention provided to students before special ed and in other districts and states it might be four tiers where the tier four is special education and then the tier three becomes a more intensive intervention and so there can be variation in how these multiple tiers are implemented and that these variations may be within a state or across state depending upon particular context and uh, rules and regulations within that district and state. So Russell, RTI doesn't come without challenges, as you well know, and so we probably should talk about what some of these are. And the one that occurs to me is some of the issues related to roles and responsibilities of key personnel that were very well defined in the pre-RTI days and are now being sort of refined in the RTI days. An example is the special education teacher whose role and responsibility with respect to either being in an inclusive setting or in a resource room or in a special ed setting was pretty well understood. And now within RTI, many special education teachers are asking, how does my role change? Am I involved in these screenings that are school-wide? Am I involved in the multiple tiers of intervention? If so, is it only tier three or tier four that I'm involved in? As we implement any new program in a school district, RTI isn't the only example, of course, the roles and responsibilities of the key stakeholders do shift. Another thing that I, I find is confusion about what to do with math. Math, we have some assessments for younger students. Beyond that, they're real, we really lack interventions, intervention strategies, and valid ways to screen. In math, where do you start? Do you start at the middle school because of this huge emphasis on algebra? Do you start as we did in reading because with younger kids because you already have a system in place, K3 teachers are familiar with it. So in addition, Russell, to challenges related to implementing math for students that have difficulties, what do you think we can do with respect to middle and high school and how we implement RTI in those settings? The vast majority of research and the largest numbers of descriptive studies around RTI really focus at the elementary level. It's going to play out very, very differently. There's, again, a lot of drawbacks. The kids have many teachers, but there are also advantages. The pull-out idea can be tied into a child's schedule. In fact, the huge issue is um, that the typical thing, if a child needs an intervention in middle school or high school, they lose an elective. And 
what we know about engagement of kids is sometimes it could be the clubs and the electives that keep kids engaged. One nice advantage is that for an initial cut at screening, starting in third grade at every state, we have a state assessment. It's not perfect, but it's certainly if a kid is below proficient, there's a sign, you have that sign that you want to do something more. One of the lessons we've learned about RTI is that we need patience. RTI is not a simple idea that can be readily implemented by a district in, you know, one professional development in one year. Districts are really going to have to think about how they build from the bottom up an effective RTI system slowly and layering these key components. It's always better to prioritize a few areas and do them well and then move into others. It strikes me that one of the things we hope for is that schools can be persistent in organizing and retaining those critical principles of RTI that are working and that the effort and professional development it takes to building and sustaining a model RTI framework in their schools isn't discouraging to them and that they are able to reap the re rewards that an RTI program can potentially yield, including increased performance in regular classrooms in math and reading, reduced numbers of students at risk, and more appropriate and timely referral of students to special education. Mm -hmm.